Tonight, we are honored to be joined by a man who brings a lifetime of skill, talent, experience, devotion to help each and every one of the men and women who have served this country. Please welcome with me the U.S. Secretary of Veterans Affairs, the Honorable Robert A. McDonald. Thank you. I'm having a hard time getting used to this secretary stuff. Suddenly I became honorable. I, I thought I was honorable when I was at West Point and I followed the duty honor country, the, the, the honor code, but suddenly I became honorable. I don't know, quite understand this, but I'm, I'm very thankful for Willie and I'm very thankful to Paul who invited me uh, to speak tonight. Congratulations to everyone. 10 years of uh, IAVA service to our latest generation of warfighters. That's fantastic, and I salute you for that. Congratulations. Let me also thank you and all the veterans for your service and for your sacrifices. I just had a roundtable discussion, which uh, Bill and Alex and some of your other members uh, were part of tonight, and it brought together uh, for me several perspectives uh, that, on the issues facing the VA. Thank you for the opportunity to participate in that. I welcome your advice, your criticism. I want you to know that IVA's voice is being heard, that we're reacting to it, that you're part of the process, and it's influencing everything that we do. Through your participation in local stakeholder meetings as I've traveled to over 42 different facilities in 22 different cities across the country, through IAVA's representation on the working group for VA's purchase of new medical appointment scheduling system, through our memorandum of understanding on our joint work to stop veteran suicide, one of our top priorities together, through your members regularly attending briefings on VA's operations, initiatives, and performance, and through discussions with me and other VA leaders, particularly in regard to the CHOICE program. I thank you for your participation. VA cannot do what needs to be done and accomplish its goals without a full complement of partners like IAVA. We look to you and other organizations to help us build a better VA for our mutual customers through ongoing dialogue, constructive counsel, and positive input. We look to you to help insert a degree of balance and truth to the rather one-sided conversation about VA cares and services. And that balance comes from supported by facts, metrics, and objectivity. And we look forward to working together with all of you as advocates, not adversaries taking advantage of each other's purposes other than helping veterans. Really what we're all about as veterans, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for veterans. The gravity of what happened in Phoenix and elsewhere is lost on no one. We have a responsibility to right the wrongs, and we're doing that. At the same time, VA also has the opportunity to lengthen our lead in areas where we've always excelled, take the lead in service delivery areas that are lagging, and chart new ground in emerging and evolving areas of health care. We're moving forward to fully leverage that opportunity while we own and are fixing the problems of the recent past, we have our eyes on the future, and we're looking at it through the lens of the veterans we serve. It's the only lens that counts. Over the past three months, through our Road to Veterans Day initiative, we've set our sights on three non-negotiable goals. The first is to rebuild trust with veterans and stakeholders. Second, continue to improve service delivery, focusing on veterans' outcomes. Third, set a course for long-term excellence and reform. And we've made some progress on all three. Accelerating care to veterans is our top near-term priority. We've reached out to hundreds of thousands of veterans to get them off wait lists and into clinics. We've added 1,600 more nurses, 600 more physicians, and 700 more schedulers to our ranks. I've been to 11 medical schools to do that. From June through September, we completed 19 million appointments, 
1.2 million more appointments this year versus the same period a year ago. 98% of these appointments were completed within 30 days. And 500,000 were completed Thank you. And 500,000 were completed during extended hours at VA facilities as an added convenience to our veterans. We've developed something we call the Blueprint for Excellence to reestablish VA's leadership in healthcare. And we've begun what may become the largest restructuring in the department's history. We call that reorganization in our customer service solution, My VA. It's part of the Road to Veterans Day strategy. We call it My VA because that's how we want veterans to view us, as an organization that belongs to them, providing quality care in ways that they need and want to be served, whether they come to us digitally, by phone, by paper, or in person, and whether they come to us for health care of any one of our eight other lines of businesses. The goal is simple. Deliver quality care and service with the same proactive, real-time, courteous, and coordinated service as the top-ranked customer service companies in the country. VA already has some of that service excellence. Since 2004, the American Customer Satisfaction Index, or ACSI, has shown that veterans receiving health care in the VA give us higher satisfaction ratings, ratings than patients receiving care in private hospitals. For the past decade, the ACSI has ranked our National Cemetery Administration as the top customer service organization in the nation, better than Google, better than Lexus, and all the rest. And every year for the past five years, J.D. Power has scored VA's mail order pharmacy the highest in overall satisfaction of all pharmacy businesses. So with the right reforms, there is no reason why that performance index can't be scaled VA-wide. We're making good progress toward that goal. We've cut disability claims backlogs by 60% in the last 20 months, but we have further to go. And veterans' homelessness is down by 33% since 2010. Last week, we began implementing the new Veterans Access, Choice, and Accountability Act, or CHOICE Act for short. It allocates $5 billion to hire more doctors, nurses, and medical staff, and $10 billion to fund additional purchase care while building internal capability. VA has always used purchase care when needed, but with the CHOICE Act, we're taking it to a new level with our Veterans Choice program. From June through September, we approved more than 7 million appointments for veterans to receive care in the community. That's a 47% increase over the same period last year. Just this week, we stood up a special call center to verify eligibility and answer questions about the program. Please try us. Call 1-866-606-8198. We've also begun extending the option of purchase care to eligible veterans who live more than 40 miles from a VA facility. We'll do the same for those who've been waiting too long for an appointment meaning more than 30 days from the clinically appropriate date preferred by the veteran. In the coming months, we'll issue a choice card to all other veterans enrolled in VA health care, that's 9 million veterans, all who might need purchase care in the future. The choice program can be a big part of the solution to our access problem, but the new law is extremely complex and we need to make sure we get things right the first time. Here are some of the issues. We need to make sure that VA doctors and non-VA doctors both know what the other is doing for each veteran, and what that veterans get the screening and preventative care they need. That's why last Saturday, I was at the American Medical Association convention in Dallas 
speaking to doctors about what we need to make sure we take care of veterans in the right way. We also need to make sure seeking and receiving purchase care is as easy as possible for both veterans and for physicians. We need to get the physicians to be part of the program. For those reasons, we've signed contracts with two healthcare companies with experience running similar programs, TriWest and HealthNet, and we will be working with them to administer the CHOICE program in the best possible way. The CHOICE Act will go a long way to enabling VA to meet the current demand for care and to support the large-scale reform for the long-term excellence. Look, uh, VA has come a long way since May. What we're all about is way, way too important to let any selfish political or self-aggrandizing ambitions get between us and the customers, the veterans. Both our organizations were created to serve. There's nothing more important than caring about veterans. As we... Look, and I know you're there and we're there and we're eager to partner. As we continue to move forward, we'll retain our laser-like focus on veterans. Let's work together in deeds as well as words, and let's not let up in the drive to provide the very best in care and services that veterans and their families have already earned and that they deserve and that we need to get them. Thank you very much.